Merci. OK, merci. It was a disaster. Uh, not, not even close to a disaster, I would say. And um, we have, uh, according to the program, half an hour for uh, a discussion and uh, questions from from us up here and from the audience also. Is, is that okay with, okay. Um, and I must say that we are ridiculously good prepared, ex except for that I can't find my glasses. Um, I lost mine also. You lost your also, okay. Something that must be safe somewhere on here. <laughs> Oh, it's so, mine, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could borrow, we could, we could take turns actually. So, uh, we have prepared here um, eight questions actually. And um, uh, if, if we have <laughs> 30 minutes, that'll, that'll make three minutes per question. And no, no question from the audience, so that's no good. <laughs> so, I, I think what we do, because the first question is about history. It's about um, giving a reference line uh, to understand the before and after. And I, th I think that was basically what your, your presentation was about. So do you still want to answer that question? Yes. Okay. So, um, it's about history. Um, Briefly. Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, and the restoring, there's a quote from, from Georges or from the text saying that the restoring of the river air is giving a reference line to, uh, in turn, uh, give a possibility to understand the before the and the after. It's the shift, okay. So, <laughs> I have a line. different manuscript than you have, okay. That's yours. Uh, okay. So, let's move over to, uh, to, the, sh yes, shift, to the shift. Yes, to the shift. And the question I wanted to ask, Shosh, is uh, you come out of architecture. You've been teaching architecture in Geneva for all your life, and, and, and uh, architecture is your basic not training. Finished. Pardon? It's not finished all right? It's not finished. It's, uh, the life goes on as, as the river, right? Uh, and how was your shift from landscape to architecture? Maybe you can comment yeah. the difference between working with buildings and with, uh, as opposed to landscape. No, you know, he sent me this uh, and uh, I was playing uh, read, um, drinking a coffee and saying I'm going to answer seriously. So I, I wrote this. Actually, I didn't come out of architecture. I was educated in the landscape of my childhood, which was the one I have shown. So I was also uh, born in, in around the, the plain de l'air. So I was in the landscape, and I come out of the landscape to enter in architecture much later. Mm -hmm. So my background is, uh, is landscape. Of course, you can, most Bach said, uh, at university, you can, if you have good professor, but uh, you can also, for example, I don't know the Latin name of, of the plants, but I can recognize trees because when I was uh, uh, born in the countryside, I was, uh, I know exactly what is a poplar, a, a nas, etc. So my knowledge was uh, from my childhood. So I was a landscape architect, uh, but uh, not architect, but I was habitué. I, I was uh, used to to go to the landscape. Uh, and a second, uh, um, second thing is that my father was a bookseller, and. Uh, I started to say that in a, in a landscape there is always a fiction, a récit, a story. There are stories in the landscape, of course, symbolically. And I was reading when I was a child, Jack London, or people, Fanny Moore Cooper, all these American guys who were in, going into with their dogs uh, in, in North Canada. And I was superposing to this plane because it was the very same uh, spot of my childhood, this, I was superposing the story of American writers and was with my dog and I was saying, ah, oh, now we are going through the tempest and was, uh, so there was always for me a kind of in, a knowledge of, a, not a knowledge, an experience of the landscape mixed with literature. And then I come to architecture and I never enter really in landscape architecture because for me it's, it's the same. Mm. 
discipline. I accept the term landscape architecture, but you know, Catherine showed that the, 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 the limits of both are. Mm. So, so you would say, but if I, if I would persist, would you say it's it's impossible to identify a difference between the oh, no. way of working for a landscape architect as opposed to an architect? You know, I was, uh, I tr start, yes, hello. Yes, I think we can, uh, uh, you know, we must not exaggerate. If you do, you make f gardens or landscape, you, you start to know the technology, you know the problem on the site, so you get an experience, which is not the same as a building. But the main thing for me was uh, uh, something different. It was uh, in architecture first. But I had the uh, big uh, luck to, to know uh, André Corbeau, which is an historian of architecture, who, who was interested in, in, the, in the transformation of, uh, of, of the, coming from the painting restoration. He said when uh, they restore painting, they don't add or continue uh, the, the, the lacking piece of a painting, of a fresco, of a etrusque. They deal with the transformation. So there is always some, so, and he gave the rules. You don't have, you have to make a clear modification that you, someone can recognize. So it's, it's, it's not mimic, again. It's a clear difference what I have found in painting, what I've tried, to make it with a minimal, and then to have a possibility of a reversibility. You don't touch the painting in a way, because maybe you are wrong. And then, 10, 10 years later, in, in the late 70s, Corbeau ex exposes, uh, prolonges, uh, goes with this uh, attitude to architecture and then to urbanism, saying there is always something here. So invention, we can talk about this. So that was my uh, training. So we made uh, several uh, building, very long process of transforming old barn with uh, farming and, and making a, a adaptation. And suddenly they asked me to make this park. I no idea how to make a park. So I translate, I said, okay, there is something. We are going to use the same methodology as for architecture transformation or innovation of de uh, transformation. So we have a, we look at the map, we, are, we work on site and on the archives, and we try to understand the, the, modific the historical modification of the land, and then to give some uh, hints or possibility for the people to reconcile, to transform. So it's why that, that, so the, the shift from architecture to landscape came by hasard, par hasard with a methodology, methodology coming, it's a big name for, but uh, with a kind of methodology, let's say, came from, uh, from the paintings for architecture and uh, to Ghana. And maybe it was not so, it was not an habit of landscape architecture to use this uh, trilogy of uh, intervention you can identify, minimalist, and then you can return. So you don't touch it in an irreversible mm. manner the, 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 the object. I see. So, so what you're saying is that the artistic professions, they share method, more or less. Uh, yes. So yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's move over to um, talking like about the site. Is that okay? That, this site, is, yes. yes, this is also something that you touched on in your presentation, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you could describe okay. your, your, your work in, um, in, in revealing what is already mm -hmm. there yeah. and, uh, and on the site, what yeah. is existing and, and how... To, to, you have already shown that in your mapping, I think, mm -hmm. but maybe so we could expand the question saying, how do you define what is good and what is bad, what is usable qualities and what are, are aspects that you could get rid of? Maybe that's a yeah, better question. Yeah. Well, for example, in a, in a house, when you transform a house, there are a lot of things to get away because the, the house has been, we, 
is maybe from the 18th century, and in the 19th century, they made ad ad additions that are absolutely disastrous. So you can clean, the, see what is the structural uh, main elements, and then to get rid of the, of mm. the additions. But how do you know they're disastrous? How do you... Uh, because my immense knowledge. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do we accept that as no, an answer? No, I take the risk. <laughs> no, but you can go seriously through through. Um, it's more or less uh, true. I mean, it's more or less obvious that there are additions. We are really stupid or criminal or. Yeah. But moving over to the river, how did you judge no, okay. those no, things? But now the river uh, I would like. I will come. Uh, I, well, it's true that we always said, uh, you know, it's about imagination. I have no imagination in a way if you think uh, it's fantasy. Yeah, and uh, and uh, we have a writer in, in uh, he's, he's dead, but Ludwig Hohl, he was a German uh, speaking uh, important author, and he said that in, imagination is not a fantasy, a creation the creation of nothing. It's just a way of rising the temperature of existing things. And Charles Baudelaire did the same. He said, our imagination is not a fantasy, it's based on the concrete part of the world that you can, you know, imagination for me is what I can identify as possibility for a project. So it's very subjective. And I think on the same side, uh, uh, Catherine could make another project. Okay, so my, my, when you have uh, the idea that this could be shifted, this, this is, uh, and is going many, very often by drawing. Because, it, you know, if you look, if you take a photo, the photo takes everything. If you draw, you choose what you draw. You, draw. you don't draw everything. And uh, if you are exper experimented, maybe you draw the possibility, the potentiality of a project. You already choose where you could act to transform. And Patrick Boucheron, we have uh, in France, they have in France uh, beautiful people, apart a lot of others. And uh, Patrick Boucheron said this idea of memory of a, of a place can be really found and, and, uh, and reinforced only through the process of graduate transformation. You can't uh, frigorify the site, or I don't know, naphtaline. You have to accept that every generation, you move a bit, you change, and this movement is a movement of life. It's, it's a, nothing is fixed, and you have to, it's, it will be terrible not to say this landscape will not change forever. That's completely stupid in terms of science or, and this river proves that, she, no, I have uh, this uh, photograph of the river, but now it's completely different. It's, a, it's, a, it's an extraordinary expansion, explosion of life, you know. That's uh, birds, uh, fish, and... Uh, so, so you're saying that change as such is natural, it's a natural yeah. process, and you don't really try to make selections in that, you just let it happen. So w we have your client here, Are you, you're the client, aren't you? Yeah. So how did you persuade your client into, <laughs> into this kind of, you said that imagination is personal, Yeah, but, uh, but still you, you succeeded in transferring your personal way but, uh, of imagination I, uh, to your client. I was, uh, I can follow what um, Catherine said, you know, you have your own uh, process or method and you have the program and you, if we don't do whatever we like, we have also to answer to the practical question of uh, you have to, uh, to secure the river, the, the, the city, you have to give more space to the river. So we have a, a, a cadre, a, sh a frame of, uh, inside this frame we are more or less more free to, to adapt. And, uh, but, so we have rules or we have um, contingency and fortunately, you know this uh, story of the font table, you know this fontaine, it was made for the park in Paris. 
and uh, with Michel Coraggio, we and Julien and so on, we, we made this and Coraggio wanted to put uh, 19th century Fontaine and I said, well, it's a bit strange because we design everything and now you take a 19th century Fontaine. So we start in the office to make a new Fontaine with a shape like this, like this. it was a disaster. And then we said, no, if we, have, we have to have more constraints to, to find a solution. So if, we are, if you are too, too free, you, you can't find a solution. And uh, all the park was adapted to the person, fragile person with a wheelchair, etc. And I've seen that the 19th century Fontaine was not very good for the fragile, most fragile people. So we were at, at that moment looking in the direction and we found that for these people, disabled, it's always a table. They can put their knees under and then sit and it goes in the kitchen, bathroom, it's always like this. So we make a collage of a fountain and a table. We call it a font table, which was an invention. And it works. So this... Uh, <laughs> No, I say I, what I am going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tr I, I'm trying to condense what you're saying. So you're saying uh -huh. that the restraints and the limitations of a project actually uh, okay, yeah. helps you making sure. these selections. So of that course, was what of I... Course, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree. Mm. But fortunately, I, we have a program as always. <laughs> it would be impossible <laughs> to design a, a, a new garden without okay. a program. No? Yeah, okay. good. Endless, it's an endless story. Yeah. I was thinking, do you think we should... About uh, the money problem. <laughs> we are also a frame of financial because he does not uh, really give money so easily. You know, interviewing, <laughs> interviewing Georges de Combe is like chasing a fox. He always jumps elsewhere, you know, you have to chase him all the time. <laughs> I was thinking if we should... Uh, uh, how about the audience? Are you sleeping or are you very eager to put questions? What do you say, George? Should we have the audience coming in a little bit? Are you tired like us? No, it's a very, I see two very energetic persons here. Um, my uh, name is Thomas. I'm a landscape architecture student from uh, Austria, Vienna. Good. And uh, I've seen some beautiful poplar trees on the photos. I would be interested to know how the vegetation um, reacted to the restoration work? Uh, the, you mean the poplar or the rest of the vegetation? Did they die or are they still there? No, the poplar, they are... Uh, we, no, we, we wanted to keep the poplar line, so which is a problem already with uh, some... Uh, some a lot of people who think that it's not a, 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 an indigenous uh, plant, that uh, this poplar should uh, stay in Italy and uh, don't, don't invade Switzerland, you know, like spaghetti, you should think. <laughs> and, and, uh, we, we said, you know, this line of poplar, one kilometer, it's a civic line. It, it has a, you know, that's my story, that a, a the landscape is also a cultural reading. There is a symbolic, it, the people like this. So we have now, uh, these uh, poplar are nearly 80 years old, they are very bad condition. So we are, now we have a process of, we take 10 by 10, we destroy, enfin, we cut it and we plant it. It's exactly what she said with uh, to have uh, existing trees and put new ones. So it's, you know, the, the worst thing would be to cut all the poplar and to plant all the new, because it will be a, a hit in the, in the community. So now we have a kind of a dance with the poplar and we put this. In. For the rest, we, we plant a lot of, we have a biologist and, a, and, a, and a people who know better than me the plant, and we have a lot of, uh, I don't know how many thousand of new plants and it's a lot of salix or all, all these uh, uh, species which are uh, welcome near a river or fruit trees or a lot of uh, bushes and so on. So it's a step-by-step -step, uh, renovation you can say. Is that yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A, an it, answer it, to it, your absolutely. question Thomas? Okay so yes uh, I, I, I think we have Yes, you have the microphone, you have the power, so let's hear it from you. Good afternoon. Electric power. 
Um, my name is Chris. I do study architecture here at the HCU. And uh, I'm very thankful for um, all the stimulations uh, I and we received today. Um, I'm wondering how many people here, or especially um, do you know or ever heard about Moonwood? And if yes, um, what are your thoughts? Moonwood? Did anybody hear about Moonwood? I think you have heard about Moonwood since you... So please tell us, what is Moonwood? <laughs> yeah, it's um, very interesting. It's not a certain kind of tree. It is more so um, a form of harvesting the tree. So it has, it's being harvested or cut at a certain time. And um, it's very interesting for me to see that um, there are so many experts from so many different countries and nobody oh. ever heard about it. I have, I, have a, I have lacuna in my ignorance. <laughs> Sorry? I have holes in my ignorance. I, 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 I think many of us know the habit, especially in the old times, of harvesting trees to make baskets and also food for animals and, and such. Is, is that what you refer, is that Moonwood or? Um, okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's but, just, but let's. What I wanted to say or um, maybe yeah, just give on, on your way as a, a little feedback is to research it um, because it is a yeah, very old and traditional way and I think maybe a chance for us yeah. um, building houses or building... Mm. We'll do it tonight actually, George. I think so we should we, go out and do exactly, some woodwoody. <laughs> exactly what uh, Catherine said, we learn uh, more All the time. from the audience. And, uh, the, the young man in the light blue shirt, please. Uh, hello, my name is Peter Hessels. I'm a landscape architect from Amsterdam. Amsterdam? Um, yes. Good. <laughs> Maybe good, we I don't know I'm, yet. I'm not alone here, I think. Uh, um, my question is, I'm also an intellectual property lawyer, originally. Um, where these two professions come together, I'm curious, the technique that you used for uh, this river remediation uh, in how so far can you protect this, or are we going to see this oh, everywhere in the world? Uh, is that a good thing? That's a good uh, question. Uh, but when I was once in uh, California, Berkeley, there is a guy there. Uh, I forgot his name. He's a specialist of, uh, of uh, copyright. How is it called? The States Unis. They're called lawyers. No, no, no. They're called uh, prosecutors. But, and no, we we think that. Uh, we don't have an uh, author right, we have only duties right. I, I, if people want to share this, oh, I'm welcome this. And we have, uh, yeah, we are going, all, you know, if I am here, uh, thank you for this price of the jury and all of you. It's, it's more to, honestly, we, we believe in this project as a useful project and we want to, really to, to share it with you and to uh, my, uh, this uh, Alexandre Vizard, this man, who is the boss of the services dealing with this, with uh, all the responsibility. The, you, you can guess that to make this project, which is a bit innovative, was not so easy to, to convince the population. Okay. But uh, he, he took the risk, and now he is uh, completely aware. So we will make we have a book, but we will have an, a, a, another little book on the process. Why we did this? What? What? And it could be like uh, the Moscow guys. It can be a, neu a new Neufert, but free. Which it's, we, if I wanted to make money, I choose another profession. We're not interested in money. We're just interested in um, culture and landscape architecture. Uh, Sash, you had something that you wanted? Okay, very good. Thank you. After Sash. Uh, just one question. You were uh, mentioning methodologies and how you work. And once I heard uh, you, you, you said somewhere that you uh, design in a Proustian manner. Yeah. So maybe, but that sounded really unmethodological to me. So maybe you can expand a little bit on that if it's possible. In ah, it's, it's very, it seems a bit uh, <laughs> pompous. I, I would like, to, you know, to, to, to use uh, references like Proust. What is interesting in Proust is that 
uh, it's something to do with this, uh, what I, you mentioned about a shocking moment. Because Proust, uh, according to Deleuze uh, philosophy, it's nothing to do with voluntary memory. What happened in this, you know, he, he eats something at this open uh, connection with the past. It's, it's absolutely in involuntary. So it's why, in that sense, I could say it could be a Proustian attitude to, to say that uh, we are not uh, explaining things, but we are trying to make, uh, if, if this little chi ch child goes to the water, flash, in, in the, in the, in the Rousseau moment, there is one I didn't say, when he was very old, at that time it was around 60, uh, and uh, <coughs> he was walk, walking in the countryside uh, near Bern in Bienne and he, with a friend, and he, he found a, a blue uh, pervenche, I don't know, pernicle, but pervenche, and he said, ah, pervenche, I remember when I was 17 with Madame de Varence, my love, and so, so, this, so we put a lot of blue uh, pervenche or also around there. And, uh, you know, this is, but... Uh, what is, is pervenche, Catherine, do you know? What is pervenche? Uh, per, Does anybody per know? Per or no, come such. Okay. Uh, per, periwinkle. Okay. You, you must know, no? Okay. Uh, there is, you know, we can, if I may add one thing about Absolutely. You are laughing at me. No, the, I'm laughing at the, the situation. Le, you are on the stage. Le, about imagination, inspiration. You know, we we deal with a, we have a references. It's a it's a psychoanalyst, Ronald Winnicott. Because we also are very uh, interested in playgrounds, or what in this uh, landscape. You know, this river is a larger sand pit of, of Switzerland. Because for me, this uh, playground for children are what we do when we don't have the possibility, that children have done the possibility to go free in the nature. So it's a kind of a poor, pale copy or something like a new stencil. And And you will see that this has a direct link with what we try to do. Vinicot said, a, a small child, he said, there are two kinds of play or games. In English, you, you say play or game. A game has rules. Play, and he said, playing more is a process. A, a child which is playing is, is a sandpit, it, or it found something. And as a way, you, you follow rules. Or so a lot of these uh, prefabricated uh, sliding things, it's a kind of game. The child has no other way to do that. Go up and, and so it goes. Well, maybe it's useful, but he said there are other things, much more creative, where a child, and he said, you must accept this paradox that the child is able to create something because this thing exists already. What does that mean? He said a, a, a child found a piece of wood and he said it's a, it's a horse. <coughs> he can't say if there is not this piece of wood existing, he can't say I transform it. And Vinicott said if it's going well for the child, he will go on and it's what we call culture. We play with the world. So in a way, we are really in, a, in, a, in a, the same situation that children. I play with a river. I had a river. I couldn't make this project without the river existing. You know, I can't invent this, but I can do something with this piece of wood or piece of wood. One thing I would like to add now, before I forget, is I always say I, but of course it's a, it's a lot of people working. I'm not, I, it's, a, it's also stupid to say we, you know, it looks, it's like a king, you know, if I am come, starting to say we have done this, it's becoming ridiculous, but Julien is here, uh, yeah. uh, Alexandre is here, 
the workers are here, the people, of course, we have hundreds of meetings with the people, and uh, you know, this is another story, the participation is also proposing something and then uh, seeing the reaction, and uh, so it's a long process, it's a, it's a very delicate process, it's why I said this linear garden is a, it's a scene, a scene where we accept, uh, we, we wait for the reaction. We don't want to have, to have a specialist and then we will go to another river and, and copyright, it's oh, money, no, no, no. It's a, it's a political, civic adventure. It's, it's concerning all the people of Geneva around, you know, because the, the civil society is ahead of the politician. The politician, the only one thinks they want to be reelected. And it's not a program for uh, change the planet. Of course, there are exceptions, but uh, few. And uh, I think it's very important that uh, the, the society take experience or share this. I must say that it's a very, it's a large success because, you know, we were talking about gardens. For me, a garden, it's a place, as I say, of leisure, but a certain calm, or there is an interiority in the garden, not maybe only with walls, but kind of intensity of relationship. It, it asks for a certain calm. So I am very reluctant with all this uh, landscape. Uh, it seems that they compete with TV, so more images, more color. More. I think we should be very careful, and this is a lesson of uh, Corbeau, minimal intervention. We have seen this morning that uh, when we have real minimal intervention, there is an intensity or with the Catherine. You know, it's a, you are right, it's not the right place to, to do that. But, you know, if you are not prepared to be at the right, at the wrong place, at the wrong moment, with the wrong site, you have better to change your profession. We start, we start where we can. And we go one millimeter in the good direction. It's not a solution. It's a, it's a way of, for our life, but also to give hope. And because if you wait, oh, no, it's not a good place. And, and it's, oh, no, I will try. To, no, no. I think it's around uh, six and a half kilometers. <laughs> how, does it, um, how many minutes does it need to walk down there? No, from the, uh, to answer you take to a tram. It's a, it's a, the society is more or less at a 10 kilometers, and then along this uh, project, uh, if we got, and then from the city center, it's about five kilometers. Maybe. Okay, very good, thank you. Sylvia, absolutely the last question. Thank you. Um, so what you did is uh, basically, is, is you turned a, a technical question into a, a cultural solution. Um, for me, that's what you did. But it, was this already recognized in the uh, competition phase? Or did this no. grew in, in the process? No, we, we, you, you have seen uh, uh, in the competition we draw, uh, we, we, we draw that we couldn't know how to draw the river. That was uh, the only um, preoccupation that we were at. The, and then we forgot a bit this, and then suddenly we said, no, we should, uh, because the first phase was not made like this. We just had uh, advice that you get rid of the, the humus and you let the river draw. And then we come back to that. So it was a long process, if I have understood your question. Mm. We were in the same jury from uh, Prix de Rome for Adrien, or? No. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, audience, for being so brave and staying all the... And it's not finished yet. You can't go home uh, for another half an hour or so. Uh, I think uh, we had very many interesting answers from you, Georges. Not the answers of my questions, but still very interesting. <laughs> so we're completely satisfied with this. So again, congratulations to the award and to, to the, the fine project. Okay. Thanks a lot. And uh, you know, it's always like this. You know, yes, you right. ask question and uh, to, okay. to answer in another way.